Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Friday night recording session once again, because it is Friday. And I am still on a mission to complete the From Us None discography. So, the two-day album. Uh, the Dugan Dugan Era album. Um, let's see. We've checked out, I think, three songs on this album already. So, we've got... The intro close to you, first track, think of you, um, watch Dugan Dugan on the title track marathon, 22nd Century Girl we did on the B-side marathon, Clover we did on the B-side marathon, but we're just going to run through it all top to bottom anyways. Makes it a lot easier for me, and yeah, we'll just go along with it. Um, forgive me if I like look really uncomfortable on occasions. I kind of inhaled pasta a little bit too quickly, and I've got heartburn. So, we're off to a great start tonight, but here we go. Also, it kind of panned out really nicely, because I needed a little bit of a pick-me-up today. While it wasn't, like, too, like, nothing too serious. It, uh, if you've kept up with K-pop news today, you'd know about Uju Sonya. And, well... I've never had a group where literally both of my biases left, so it's it's kind of an interesting time for me. But I'm glad we just Sonya are still going to be active in some capacity because, goddamn, do they deserve it? And, but this isn't about Uju Sonya. That's for a different day. We have promised content to get to, and uh, an intro. Again, which I feel like we haven't had an intro in recent albums, right? It's mainly been an older album thing, but. Based off of Dugun Dugun and based off of the Two Heart album and the Glass sh and Glass Shoes, probably more lighthearted stuff again, and uh, kind of like youthful innocence in a way in terms of the lyrics and the music. So, let's jump right into it. <coughs> Time to put my reading glasses on and my thinking brain on because I need to read the lyrics. Should get a little bit of strings. I was expecting a melodic top line. I wasn't expecting the narrator Nako to come in. Okay. Lyrics again, you know, very heavy team romance vibes, I feel like. Wow. I never realized how baby Jihon sounds in this era, like this early in Promise. Oh, no way! It ends with... I'm assuming this is going to transition into the next song. But the way it ends on a really gentle piano, and then... It's door opening or door closing. Interesting. Again, it's it's almost like a storytelling intro in a way. I quite like that. I feel like typically when I think of like K-pop intros in a way, it's usually like kind of like musically telling the story of the album in a way, like setting up for the title track or setting up for the next song or kind of like an impromptu like album teaser in a way. But Fromus have kind of gone for like the storytelling method. And I quite like that. I think that's super unique. And it's also like... 
it's still in that era where they're still super young and they're fresh on the scene and they just like it's just abundantly happy vibes that's coming off of this like whatever they produce and i think that's so cool okay think of you track two Oh my goodness. Break it down. Bass on's kind of going nuts. was a long transition into the pre-chorus, I think? Very rarely you get a transition in between the verse and the pre-chorus. Oh my goodness. This is sugar-laced pop music right here. This is like... Diabetes inducing sweet. Oh my goodness. Oh, interesting. Interesting transition again. This song is doing transitions very, very interestingly. <clears throat> Shorter transition this time into the pre-chorus. So happy. Key change. Okay. It's interesting comparing this era's music to like stay this way era music. <clears throat> Because, like, you can almost tell that there's, like, they're still a little bit nervous about singing. And, like, that, like, their, like, vocal skills haven't been, like, polished, polished like it is now. Nice outro there as well. Ooh, okay. Woo. This one's kind of interesting because this is kind of exactly what I expected this to be, but it's also not exactly what I expected this to be because it's the youthful energy of early Fromis music is like... You, have you ever had those times where, say... It was like a special occasion, it was like your birthday, a friend's birthday, or whatever, and you get a cake from the supermarket. And this pertains particularly to my American people out there, but when you eat into it, and it's just sickly sweet, like you can just feel, not taste, but you can feel the sugar that's laced in like the sponge, the frosting, the cream they've used in between the layers, like you can feel all the sugar as you like eat the cake. Fromus's music in this specific stage is so, like, sweet. It's almost like, I don't know why, but think of you 
I wonder if it's because I'm comparing it to the title track. Because the title track doesn't come across as like sickly sweet to me in a way. I should probably stop using that analogy, but like it's abundantly like bubblegum pop song. The title track doesn't feel that way. Like this is extremely like bubblegum pop music. And I think it's like a notch even more bubblegum pop music than probably I think so far I would say this is probably the most like sugary bubblegum pop song that From Us had released. Mind you, I have only made it through one album and this song, but Interesting, because this is like, I think this is more bubblegum pop music than the entire Too Hard album. And that was pretty, that was a pretty high energy, like, album in its entirety. Interesting style choice to open the album with this. But then we get to the title track. Also interesting choice putting the title track. Second. They had a filler track in between the intro and the title. This one we've listened to before, so we'll just kind of like listen through it and then just go straight into the next one. But we'll use this one to talk a little bit. I also clocked that this is going to be the new Fromis lineup moving forward, isn't it? Because Guti was in produce during this. And these eight are gonna be the only ones still in the group for the next album. Yeah, this one doesn't come across as bubblegummy as the last one did. So I'm noticing a lot that Nako has a lot of like chorus lines in the early eras, I feel like. Kind of like the last bar or two of the chorus. Was that a common thing back in the day or is that just me like overanalyzing it? God, I love that movie. I still think that's like one of the catchiest choruses. Or at least like co chorus killing points in from his titles for me. I still can't get that rhythm down with, with how the synth kicks in. I playlisted this right away when we listened to the, um, uh, did the B-side marathon, because I quite enjoyed this. This reminds me a lot of, like, what was this? I forget what song it was, but it reminds me of... It feels like what a video game version of... There was a group I had in mind, but I just forgot the name of it now. Oh gosh. What 
like a video gamified G friend ish type of song. It's got lots of chip tune, it's got lots of synth, and it's got very similar melodic progressions to how G friend songs would. But it's just quintessentially from us once we get past like the first verse and then we get into the chorus. Jiwon on the uh, head voice flips in that chorus. It's also interesting how much each member's roles have kind of changed through the years. Because I feel like Jisun to Jihon, like those five members on the right, their roles have changed a lot compared, like now compared to this era. But Jihon on the bridge. So good. Her voice fits so well on the bridge. Like, some people's voices are just suited to the bridge. Like, twice as Mina is one, Jihon is one. I'm trying to think who else is really good on bridges. Tail from NCT on bridge. I was just about to say that interesting that Hyung hasn't had like the amount of high notes that she has now, but I was corrected at the very end, so I retract that statement. But yeah, like stylistically, I mean we're three songs in on this album, but like Jisun's range is entirely higher. Nako is getting a lot of high singing t uh, sections. And those high tones are so much different to how she sings high tones now. Like, her head voice flip now is so much... There's a much more distinct difference between her chest and head voice now than there was back then. Cheong, I feel like, is singing a lot, especially in the higher registers. We haven't had any rapping at all in this album so far. Typically, when I think of like rappers in the group, I usually think of Soyeon first and foremost. Soyeon, and then, then, Romse and Jaeyoung, and then Romse, Jaeyoung, Jihon next. But typically, when I think of rap, I think of Soyeon. But she's been like entirely melodic this album so far. Interesting, 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 interesting. And the fan song. With nine members this time. So of course this was the fan song. I think we checked out this exact same video last time as well. Oh yeah, I said I was gonna try and learn this on guitar. I couldn't find tabs or chords for it, so I'm gonna have to like... If I want to play this, I'm gonna have to like actually write down some chords for myself, but... Yeah. 
can figure out the course for this. Hold on. It's not as complicated as I thought it was going to be. Guitar's out of tune. I'm kind of surprised that I for, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm kind of surprised that From Us Nine did a fan song this early, because this would have been. Let me actually go check very quickly. Um, so the two day album was June 2018. Their pre debut single was November 20. So this was six months roughly after they started like promoting in a way and they already had a fan song out that i feel like is really quick like again i don't really have much in terms of reference material to compare off of but i feel like a fan song within six months is pretty quick but i'm not knocking it at all i quite enjoy it in fact i think in terms of the B-side, it might be my favorite B-side on the album so far. Mind you, we do have one more song left to check out, but I really do like the melody of this song. It's so sweet, and it's so happy, and it's so genuine, and it's... It's like what... I'm gonna use this these two songs as reference material because it's got that kind of like... What I kind of call symphonic pop in a way, you know, heavy on the strings, heavy on the kind of classical uh, musical like techniques and music theory elements here and there. But I feel like this would be the type of song that sits right in between Oh My Girl's fifth season and Secret Garden. It's like fifth season is pretty quick. And it's like, it's got a lot more modern elements to it. Secret Garden is super slow and it's super melodic and it's kind of relying on like the sweeping feel of like the string instruments. I feel like if you took those two styles together, combined them and then split them right down the middle, you would get From His Ninth Clover. It just it has that feeling to it. And I love that. I love, I love symphonic pop music. It's so cool. It's like bringing my two joys in music together and then you add on like a little sprinkling of harmonies to it oh it's it's the perfect formula but thank you for dealing with me and mike hopefully not incessant guitar playing but i believe this is the last song on the album it is like the acoustic guitar No ballads yet, though. Ooh. There's some interesting synthy thing going on in the background.
Jiwon's voice just c cuts clean through everything. It doesn't matter how much, like, how much instrumental is going on in the background, it just pierces through everything. That's so cool. Because there's a lot of, like, vocalists that can sing really high. But Jiwon's voice is just crystal clear. Kind of terrifying, honestly. <laughs> There isn't much of a transition into the chorus either. It's kind of like free chorus straight into the chorus and it's like one big musical phrase. Nice chord progression here. Who was that on AdLibs just now? I had a thought I wanted to say, but then that final chorus happened and that kind of went out the window. I was going to say that, speaking of like role changes, they were treating Juwon as like main vocal, main vocal back in the day. And that's really interesting because I feel like that role has shifted a little bit. Now it's like, I guess back then, main vocal duo was kind of like Nako and Jiwon. I'd still put Jiwon in as main vocal back in this era with Hayoung and Nagyoung kind of like not even like lead vocal but like sub main vocal kind of in a way and then you had like Jason on lead vocal could have had Soyeon on lead vocal because Soyeon just does everything who didn't get a rapping verse in this album I noticed interesting I'll have to keep an eye out on when she starts to switch into the rapping uh, Soyeon later down the road because I feel like because I kind of worked my way backwards with Fromis, like, my first era was Stay This Way, and then I found DM, and then I found... Oh, I guess I knew Love Bomb, but... Like, when I truly started to, like, break into Fromis 9 music was... From our Memento box, and then... Airplane mode. So it's like we're going back through the eras, and then with this deep guy, we've been starting from the beginning. So we're getting, like, the freshies from us, and now we're getting to, like junior year and senior year from us so i'm kind of i've kind of read the back of the book and started from the beginning which i think is okay but there's definitely some clear differences i'm seeing here where was i going with this can you tell my brain is frazzled today oh my goodness okay um I have Spotify open on this screen. Um, what do I think about this album? How do I phrase it without not sounding really boring? Because I was going to say I like this album, but that's such a generic answer. It's There's some interesting stuff going on with it. I think the progression of energy throughout the album is really interesting. 
because the intro you kind of don't know where the album is going to go and then well i kind of have like what do you call it? what do you, if you want to call it insider knowledge on the album just based off the title track but that it, that first song before dugun dugun think of you was so high energy it was like that was a lot And I think I feel that way mainly because I know what some of their other music and some of their later music is like. Especially the title track. You already know my opinions about Dugan Dugan. I don't think Think of You is a bad song. I quite like it in kind of like a guilty pleasure kind of way. But I think I need to be in a particular mood for it because it's a lot for me to listen to. 22nd Century Girl is a great song. Clover is really good. I still think Clover is my favorite song on the album. Oh, if I had to choose one that wasn't the title. And the first love surprised me a little bit. And then because, like, I'm looking at the streaming numbers on it, and it does not... It has, like, less than a half the streams of Clover. And, like, 700,000 less streams than Think of You at the time of recording on Spotify. But I wonder if it's kind of like the late album uh, curve kicking in. Because not many people stream the later uh, songs on an album. They just kind of stream the main ones and that's about it. But I quite like First Love. It's got a nice little charm to it. It's a little bit like much like kind of like Clover was. Like you started with, you started the album with the intro and then you went super high energy, like high energy you essentially had a sugar rush on the first song and then it started to peter away but it never fully like resolved itself like it was still fairly high energy with like clover and first love nothing compared to the beginning of the album but we haven't had like a proper album rounding off ballad yet from from us which is really interesting to me which makes me wonder one when the rapping sections are going to come in during their discography, and two, when the ballads are going to start coming in. Because I know they exist, because we've heard a couple. Just haven't gotten to that part of their discography yet, and that makes me really curious. It is really interesting seeing the progression, though. Just of From Us 9 in general. And just like how their skills have been refined musically. And how their sound has evolved into a more mature and more like... More mature and more appropriate sound for them now. Now that they've, you know, grown up f four or five years since this stuff has dropped. Good stuff though. I, I've, I'm loving I'm loving this From His Nine adventure we're going on together. Um, what do we have next? So we have the Love Bomb single... Uh, which we'll do because I haven't heard, to my knowledge, I haven't heard the two B-sides from this album. Uh, Fun Factory, which we've, interestingly enough, listened to every single song on that album already. So we may just skip Fun Factory altogether. And then we're into My Little Society. Okay. Hmm. I'll figure it out for next week. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's it for me today. Oh, one last question. Um, moving forward, I'm assuming we're probably going to get more like special clips and things like that. I know with certain B-sides we've looked at these special clips. So like, I'm thinking likes of like Weather, Mulgogi we had special clips for, Love Rum Pum Pum we had special clips for. I know there's a special uh, video for Airplane Mode. And like, I know some B-sides will have uh special clips do you want me to use those or do you want me to just keep using the lyric videos let me know because i'm open to either it's just once we figure out what needs to be used or like when i need to use certain things i'll just add them to the queue or whatever and we'll figure it out but let me know and yeah thanks for watching if you did enjoy and want to see what channel icon is up there as per usual Find the back catalog of stuff I've watched in the past. Drop a subscription if you want to keep up to date with whenever I upload new videos. And if you want to watch another video of mine right away, YouTube recommends you watch that video down there. 
And until next time, bye-bye.